Facebook, you can do it. Mm, there we are. And we're live. Hey, Hacksters. It's been a while since I've been in the studio. Uh, I just got back uh, from the ARM Innovator Asia Tour. We went to Tokyo and Beijing and Shanghai and Shenzhen. And it was amazing. That was the last two weeks of my life. Uh, and then we had the holiday and everything's crazy. So now, now, uh, one thing that we did on this tour is we brought along a ton of these PCB badges with the Hackster logo on them, created by uh, Hackster Ambassador Gustavo Reynaga. Super cool! Uh, and a lot of people asked, like, what is this for? Uh, how do you put it together? It is um, basically a printed circuit board badge. Like, you'll see it at some conferences and stuff. Super, uh, like, nerdy pursuit uh, lately is to create your own PCB art and Gustavo has created this awesome one. Uh, it uses a 555 timer, which is something we've talked about in exhaustive detail in previous posts. You can check out hackster.io and search for 555 timer if you want to find some applications for this cool chip, which is basically used to create pulses of voltage and not voltage, or, you know, and ground, uh, used in timing circuits, and you can create um, cool, fadey, flashy light effects. You can create uh, sound waves. You can create all kinds of cool stuff. Um, and let's see, so this is available on Oshpark, and let me bring that up for you. So uh, here's Gustavo's page, it is Jire Naga on Oshpark. Uh, he created the famous Oshwi octopus badge for us as well. So cool! Or maybe for himself, I don't know, but it's got our logo on it and that's pretty neat. Uh, <laughs> and then we have the 555 Blinky, that's this guy, the through-hole version. And then we also have a hexagon version that's surface mount. Um, and you can order those on Oshpark. Uh, check out the links here. Uh, and you can just order the board right there. Super cool. So, uh, if you're curious about what a PCB is, it's um, a shortened version of printed circuit board, which is basically the foundation of most electronic project products. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting this do not track thing. Uh, and I did a blog post and show about it in the past. Uh, basically, they're circuit boards. They have been created in many different ways. You can create them at home with like a toner transfer method, um, and then etching away copper from a fiberglass board. Yeah, basically uh, it is a fiberglass board that has copper on one or both sides, uh, or maybe multiple layers of that, uh, and the copper creates traces that connect different points to each other, and that's where you put components. Uh, basically, once you have a project that's kind of solid and not likely to change very much, then you create a PCB of it, if you like, and it will be easy to sort of mass produce. Super cool. And there's some really neat ones around. I've actually got yeah, I don't know. You can see all the, this huge variety of them. And if you don't have a, a do not track thing turned on, you'll be able to see those embeds a little bit e more easily. Uh, and then one of the attendees at the ARM tour created this tutorial because it didn't exist before. Why WPG? Yup. <laughs> it depends on how Welsh you are, how, say, how you say that. Uh, hunted up tutorials to figure out which values they wanted for each of the components, and that's the tutorial that I'm going to be following. All of these are linked underneath this video, so check it out. So let's get to the soldering. Everybody's favorite part. I got to turn on my soldering iron. Here we go. It's going to take a sec. Mm, we have the the PCB itself. We have a 9 volt battery and battery connector. We have a 47 microfarad capacitor. We have four different resistors of varying values, and we have two LEDs to flash and the 555 timer itself. Oh, I wanted to talk a little bit. At, well, the soldering iron heat, heats up. Let's look into the um, logic here. So the design of the badge. Do do do. They looked at the Wikipedia page for the A-stable oscillator circuit for the 555 and figured out, you know, the duty cycle is basically, uh, you know, how long it's on, how long it's off, how frequently it, it changes. So the duty cycle being near 50% means that each LED will be on for about the same amount of time per cycle. Boop, 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 you know, instead of being boop, boop. But, but, like a heartbeat or whatever, you know? <laughs> and then um, they also wanted the period to be around one to two seconds. So it could be or like you know, uh, you can see how these are used for music. <laughs> mm. 
So I have slightly different res resistor values because my resistor kit is weird and has weird values, so it won't be as precise. Probably not 50.53% of a duty cycle, but we'll find out. The nice thing about this is it's pretty resilient. And then they looked at the other ones to figure out how, what sorts of resistors to use for the proper brightness on each LED since they have slightly different values for that. Because one of them gets its power from the out pin, the other one gets its power from VCC, uh, and then go, uses the out pin as ground. It's a really cool little circuit and I actually learned something just looking at this now. Let's see, I think my iron is warm now. Pretty much. Okay, it's got its little light blinking very, very fast, which means that I think it's close to just being ready. Anyway, I'm sure that it will melt this solder. Let's see. Yes, sweet. Okay, cool. <laughs> so let's clamp this bad boy into here. Oh, let's take a quick close up look. Um, adjust my focus here. Yes. Oh boy. There we go. Oh, that's so nice. So we have the uh, square holes indicating ground or pin one here. Uh, as you can see, this person created the tutorial by following where these vias go or traces go. And you can kind of see them when I hold it to the light like this. And you can see where the power and ground um, legs of the LEDs go. The resistors don't have polarity. They can go on either way. Pin one of the 555 is over here. You've got a jumper here. That's for connecting the nine volt battery. Uh, or, you know, you could use a JST connector and hook up some other power source. But in this case, uh, we've got a nine volt battery and the dot is indicating where ground goes. Cool. Let's bring this back to a reasonable distance. I'm using the gross masking tape side of my third hand. I should switch that around, but oh well. Just check something super quick. Yeah, okay, cool. Come back. Ah, okay, cool. So first I'm gonna put my resistors in. This is the part that I most expect to mess up because it's a little bit uh, fiddly. Which one goes where? So R1 is 1.5K, and that's between the VCC, uh, the LED that goes to VCC and to out. Okay. Is that still R1 on here? Yes, good. Okay. I did arrange these in order beforehand, which is nice. Oh, these will have to be done pretty close here, uh, bending the resistor legs in. There we go. In the future, I actually want to do some of these that are timed. Uh, R2 over there, cool. With music. So we'll see how that goes in coming weeks. Do you think I could complete this before a three minute song ran out? We're going to find out. Okay, uh, R3, cool. And just to double check, that goes between Discharge, oh, that goes to power as well. Okay, cool, that's proper. And that's the 470, excellent. I do a lot of like double and triple checking in this stuff because you know, once you solder this stuff on and clip the leads off, it's kind of a pain. I should probably test it in fact before I do clip the leads. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe if I, yeah, did less patter, uh, it would be less entertaining perhaps, but I think it would make up for that with the excitement of uh, having a time limit. Cool. Let's get this party started. That's what you'll, uh, your idea of a party is, right? Like soldering some stuff together. That is gross and dirty. Ugh. There we go. When I'm teaching people to solder, um, 
Often what will happen is that they'll hold the solder wire really close in to the joint and that A makes me kind of nervous because like your fingers are there uh, and B doesn't give them a lot of flexibility. I think what they want is control but really it doesn't give you any extra control to hold the solder so close up to the piece that you're working on. It just sort of makes it more likely that you're going to burn yourself. There we go. Okay. And as I said, I'm going to leave these leads on for now, which really makes me kind of twitchy. <laughs> I hate it! But I do want to make sure that everything's in its proper place before I clip them off. Okay, time for some LEDs. Oh, let's do the chip next, I think. Okay, so we've got the little notch on the chip here indicating pin one, and I'm going to flatten this out on my work surface so that the legs aren't sticking out to the sides. <laughs> it's really nice being back in a place where it's not super hot and muggy, but at the same time, you know, it was definitely cool to go out and get to meet everybody in like real life. I met a bunch of cool people, actually, um, that I've met on the internet before or talked to as sort of leaders of uh, companies, but have never actually met in real life. So Carmilo from uh, of the Autobot and Christina from Kittenbot and a couple awesome people from uh, uh, here we go, Morpix, the robot company. There we go. And a ton more, as well as like a bunch of people who are on the platform as users and like people who create and submit tutorials and stuff. It's super cool and exciting. One of the best parts of the job, honestly. Wait, I'm doing this backwards. This side of the, the third hand is really unruly. <laughs> okay, let's see. Get in there. Oh, doing this backwards. Let me double check that. This is the output pin and you are taking power from that and putting it into ground. Ground is where? Over here. Let me double check. Because again, I just want to be really sure that I don't wire this up backwards. So that one. Da -da -da -da. Mm. Oh, and that just hooks up to the ground plane. Perfect. Okay. Hmm. Wait, I might have this backwards. Okay. So I was, uh, I always forget which of the LED legs uh, is marked with a square. I try to remember that like the plus has, you know, two lines, but the minus also has a line. And so basically uh, I was about to put this in backwards because I was thinking that the square was negative, but this line is coming from VCC to the LED and then it's going to the resistor which is going to ground, I think. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, and then on the other one, so that's this guy, right? Let's zoom in, because this is a good object lesson. <laughs> All right, so, I always thought that the, uh, I end up assuming that the square is ground, but it's not because you can see that this is the VCC pin on the 555, and it's going to give power to the LED. The LED is then getting connected to the resistor. The resistor gets connected on the other side to pin three of the chip. Uh, wait, here? Yeah, yeah. 
Um, and that's your output pin, which will go high or low. Uh, and then the other uh, LED, we can kind of double check this, goes from the output pin to the resistor to this pin. And then this one, the one on the left, that's a circle, has nothing coming on off of it on either side. And if you look really closely, you can see that there's little tabbies that sort of connect that connection to uh, this big ground plane on the back. And so that is an easy way, and you can see also double verify, that that is uh, the connection to this ground pin on the battery as well. So uh, I was able to verify that I had it backwards like usual, um, just by looking at it though, which is nice. Um, and in fact, the square pin is power here. Okay, so we're gonna do that. <laughs> It's sometimes frustrating when I can't remember little things like that, but at the same time, it's really kind of fulfilling when I can figure them out by logic. It's a fun little puzzle, you know, sort of getting back into the office. Oh, I'm putting that in backwards. <laughs> and then on the, wait, what? These LEDs are weird too. Okay, so normally an LED will have a flat side on the ground side, um, but in this case, the which is the, the short leg, but in this case, that's backwards too. Ah, oh, this is so confusing. Lots of weirdness going on in this project. Here we go. Okay. And solder them in. I'll just do this capacitor at the same time. That's got a little stripe indicating the negative side. Wait, let's double check that. <laughs> Usually that's the case, but also, yeah, okay. But also we have a square socket over there. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna have to like follow up on this video and just like make sure that I've made the right choices in life. I think this is all correct though. We'll find out! Yay! I've got so many robots from this trip to show y'all! That's gonna be the next few days, I'm really excited. <laughs> Though tomorrow is also Fundum Friday, so we'll be catching up with the latest cool crowdfunding things. Cool. Mm -mm -mm. All right, and now finally, I'm gonna put on, I'm gonna make sure that none of these are gonna short out with each other. And finally, I'm going to stick on the uh, 9 volt power supply. Look at that. That's not very pretty. And it's kind of itching at me to uh, cut all those legs off. Can't wait. Ugh. At least it'll be super fulfilling when I get to do that, right? Stick these guys in here. that around. Cool. Alright, now let's plug it in and see what happens. <laughs> oh, I kind of wish that I'd put the blinkies on the front side. That's probably what I was supposed to do, huh? Well, no. I mean, you can do it either way, right? It's a PCB. It's an art PCB. There's no sort of like wrong or right, as long as the things work right. Uh, okay. <gasps> hey! So it's going a little bit interestingly. The duty cycle Is about even, yeah. Uh, while I had the battery not actually connected, it was wiggling around a little bit. Okay, so all my weird assumptions and having to double check stuff kind of worked out, so that's cool. Uh, I might upload a faster version of this that's just like straight through. Now that I've done it once, I can easily check back and, and uh, make notes of what I've done. But hopefully if you had any questions uh, while you were picking up your own PCB and putting it together, then this will have answered those. <laughs> uh, 
Thanks for watching, have an awesome rest of your Thursday, and we'll see you tomorrow for Fundum Friday. Stay tuned with a ton of really sweet uh, robots. Uh, check out this for example, this is from, uh, not from the trip, but uh, a gift that is loud objects noise toy. I'm gonna put it on my bike, it's gonna be great. Anyway, yeah, have a great rest of your day and we'll see you soon, ciao.